Okay, so today I will be presenting you a CLI from Microsoft 365, and this is the first demo out of the five demo series I will I am planning to deliver together with uh, co-maintainers and our co-contributors along the way that will be helping helping me present your CLI through this journey. And we will be presenting some tips and tricks how we can use CLI to manage your tenant, boost your development, and it will give you like really just a glance of what CLI is. So if there is some topic you are particularly interested, it was interesting for you, please do let me know in the chat and I will do a deep dive separate demo only on that. And today I will be doing only the intro. So the really the what and the why and the how. So let's go <laughs> before we start. So hi everybody, my name is Adam. I'm a father and standard dev. I'm a CLI from Microsoft 365 maintainer. And I'm a maintainer of a couple of other PMP products. I'm the member of PMP core team just. Yep. Reach me out if you need any help directly. Don't be shy. Okay, so what is CLI for Microsoft 365? It's a command line tool to manage your Microsoft 365 tenant and SharePoint framework products, which is really cool. It's built in on Node.js technology, so it will where any device, any platform, Windows, Mac, Android, your smart fridge, yeah, whatever, and in any shell, bash, parse, or command line. And under beneath, we are using all the well-known Microsoft 365 REST APIs like SharePoint REST API, uh, MS Graph, Azure Power Platform specific APIs, and we get, expose them as um, commands that do a specific thing or a whole scenario or, or things. And the targeted audience towards this tool is like for tenant admins or devs or to be used, of course, in automated scripts. Why would you use CLI then? Well, we have a lot of comments that cover a huge area around our Microsoft 365 world. Of course, SharePoint Online, uh, SPFX development as well, a huge uh, mm, yeah, uh, contribution that was done to the Power Platform area. So not only Power Apps and Power Apps made by Dataverse, car Cards, AI Builder, all that, Fairview, and a lot, a lot more. It's really intuitive when you start working with it and interactive by default. I will be presenting it a bit today. So if I want to add a new list to SPO, it's like SPO list and then action I want to do. Add, get, set, remove, etc. We have an AI, of course we have an AI, right? <laughs> an AI assistant built in the command line so you can just uh, execute it directly from your terminal. I will present it today. It's really helpful when you're beginning your journey with CLI and you don't know where is the command or which is the command you can use or if such a command exists. Uh, CLI can be used in code in a Node.js app as your single API for your app. So this is really, um, I would say, unique kind of thing for a command line tool. And uh, CLI integrates easily with um, CICD pipeline flow. So it integrates easily with Azure DevOps or GitLab. And with GitHub, we can say it integrates natively because we expose GitHub uh, actions that you can just get from the yeah, GitHub uh, workflow store, marketplace, whatever it's called, and just use it here. Yeah. And currently we are investing in this area. So we added a command that will generate a CICD pipeline for GitHub. And we are, as I said before, there's an open PR to extend the support for Azure DevOps on, on the way. It's really customizable. So there are many, many things you can set to make it your own. Uh, as I said before, it has commands that will allow you to manage, validate, upgrade, whatever your SPFX environment and project. So this is really cool and it works everywhere. Yeah, any device, any shell, yes, Azure functions and all of this stuff. Yeah. So why would you use CLI and not something else? And before I do a deep dive on this slide, just let's confirm that there is no one tool that is perfect for every scenario. So it's always the answer is it depends on your preferences and your case. Yeah. But why would you use CLI instead of doing things manually? Well, it gives you possibility to save and then reuse it to automate your work instead of then doing the same fix all the time. Instead of writing your own custom console application using, for example, PMP core or whatever, well, why would you start from scratch if you have all this awesome work already done for you by the community? It's actively maintained. And for example, in the last year between V6 and V7, we, we added more or less 120 commands. So it's like, new command every few days, which is like huge and an awesome contribution. Thank you very, very much. Uh, why would you use it instead of SharePoint Online Management? Sure. Well, it's not only about managing SharePoint Online, but about all everything that is on your tenant. And um, the SPO is more targeted towards the admin side and the site collection level. Well, um, Microsoft, uh, CLI for Microsoft 365 go on the artifact level as well. So like list, item, folders, etc. 
in the MS graph CLI, MS graph PowerShell SDK, the case is the same. It, we don't use only MS graph underneath. We also use SharePoint Fest, API CSOM, Azure Planner. So we have a lot of more uh, capabilities uh, there. And we have a different approach where we require you to consent to all of the required permissions up front instead of st starting with a minimal set of permissions. So we will be sure, CLI is sure that you won't be blocked by permissions when executing any kind of commands uh, using it. And it's handcrafted. So the docs for Graph CLI and Graph Partial SDK are co generated. And here, if you checked our docs or contributed to the CLI, you, you for sure noticed that we put a lot of details to the, the, the documentation. So each command is, docs are readable, have uh, all the needed details, examples for yeah, outputs, possible outputs of the commands, and so on. And yeah, this is a huge one. <laughs> Before I go here, just uh, let me revise myself. So there's no one perfect, one tool perfect for every scenario, but still, let's try to tackle it. Why would you use CLI instead of PMP partial? Well, we have, for example, commands that uh, allow you to manage your SPFX projects, which is quite unique. We have an AI assistant and it's interactive by default, so you don't need to write the whole com a command with all of the options or parameters or whatever you call them. You can just start the command, hit enter, and CLI will ask you questions to get the required minimal info to run this command. Okay, so we have a huge uh, um, work done in the Power Platform area, so not only Power App, Power Automate, Chatbots, Dataverse, AI Builder, Cards. Uh, you can use it as in your Node.js app as a single API. Yeah, so this is really awesome. And it works in any shell, not just PowerShell. So yes, of course, PowerShell can be used Windows, Linux, Mac, everywhere. But if someone is used to using Bash, then with CLI, he or she can still use Bash. Doesn't, we don't need to switch to a different shell, which is PowerShell in this case. Okay, I hope I convinced you a bit to give it a try. And if you would like to uh, try, so this is an NPM package, CLI is this uh, NPM package, so we can run the standard NPM install co command to get it. Or we also expose it through Docker, so you can use the Docker run command to get the latest CLI for Microsoft 365 image. And the first thing you will want to do is login. But be advised that we have a 365 setup command. It's a huge tip that will make CLI um, your own with just answering to a few questions. So we really advise and recommend to start with this command. But of course, login is the first, usually the first thing we do. And it's not really connecting to a single site collection, it's logging to the whole tenant. And of course, we have two possible ways to do it as a user, of course. And here we can have uh, we have three authentication methods we can use with device code, which is default, password and browser. Device code and browser are recommended because then you log in through your browser and you can leverage, for example, multi-factor authentication. And you can log in as an app. So this is a perfect use case when you are using CLI and your automated uh, scripts. And then you can use um, certificate or secret as the authentication methods. And of course, we understand that the list, and you will see it, <laughs> so permissions CLI require upfront is huge. And if you're not an admin of your own tenant, and then the, the admin will say, like, dude, yeah, this is too much. You just want to modify something on uh, SharePoint Online. Why do you need all of those permissions? Well, we totally understand it, and it's also possible to uh, create your own app registration uh, and then log in as a user through your own app so that way you can trim the permissions uh, that are required only, for example, to running the uh, support SPO. Okay, and we also have the uh, identity authentication method. This one we're presenting in further demos, but this is specifically created for Azure resources. So, for example, you can use it in Azure functions to manage uh, to uh, leverage the managed identity in the background. Yeah, so take identity from it. Okay, cool. So a small, a really small demo today. So this is my console, <laughs> and I, I have my uh, Microsoft uh, CLI already installed. So if I just hit M365, I get it. Okay, hi. These are the possible commands you can uh, run, and these are the possible areas we go. And usually, we would start with a login, but it, if you are a beginner, I would highly recommend with the setup command, which is mentioned here, which, which will make CLI our own. Because if we check the docs, and this is something I will do a deep dive in the next demo, you can see that it's really configurable and we have a lot of settings to make CLI your own, but you don't have to care about this at all. You can just run the M365 setup. And it is the wizard that will ask you two questions. Do you want to use CLI interactively or, as a, or in a script? Interactively, are you a beginner or advanced user? I am a beginner, and cool. And I, uh, these are the settings that we will set for you for your specific case. 
I like them. And that's it. So for example, it said for me the auto open links in browser or copy device code to clipboard. Uh, what's that about? Okay, it will make more sense when I do the login. But basically, this is the uh, the settings we uh, we use to say it's pre preferable for these kind of answers and this kind of person who will be using CLI and command line. Okay, so let's do the the login and see this process. Okay, so it's presented me a link. I didn't touch my keyboard yet, and <laughs> it opened the browser, and I just click uh, oh here <laughs> control uh, control F. So it already copied the device code under beneath. Now I just need to do it my standard. Uh, tenant login. So yeah, let's wait a bit. One, two, three, four, five, right? <laughs> uh, six. Oh, I got it wrong. And of course, there's a lot of permissions you need to consent up front, but be aware we have a lot of commands that cover all of the C of Microsoft 365 world. And it's also possible, as I said before, to trim it down to specifically, for example, to Power Platform commands by using your own app registration. Okay, cool. I'm logged in. Really easy, right? I'm logged in as this user using our CLI app, and I use device code to, to get logged in. Cool. So how do we move around it? So what's actually possible here? I know I have some SPO commands, so I just type M365 SPO. Okay, so I have those commands and those possible areas I can move forward, okay, like SPO site. And it doesn't seem like it's helping me, right? It's not that interactive, uh, what I said. Okay, but we also have the, the command competition that you can uh, set up for each shell that will get you like out of suggestions of the commands you are trying to write. So I'll just turn it on and yeah, in the starting docs of our uh, product, it's recommended to do it. So we support partial of course and other shells as well. And it's just a single command. And after I run it, I can now use the top. So like I do SP and now I press the top and it goes over all of the possible areas that, that go uh, yeah, with that pattern. And then I can go like site. Okay, so I have site, site design, site script. And it's really helping me to pick the right command without less like hitting enter. Okay, this is what's possible. So I go one step forward. Okay, now this is possible. So those auto completion, completion, it's really, really great. Let's do a site list. So we'll see how the CLI works and it will list uh, since I have like 1000 collections will go one hour. Okay, it was already done. What if I want to do a specific, uh, get a specific uh, site? So SPO site list was the action I wanted to do. So other actions of course are like get, at, and so on and so forth. So it's really intuitive and I can get info about a specific site I want and should, yeah, it's supposed to be interactive. Of course, I can now pass the URL as you see here and pass the whole URL, but is it really helpful? No, it isn't, but if you just hit enter, CLI will make it helpful. So it's say, okay, you want to get a site, which one you want, you want to pick? Because if this, this was the list, <laughs> pick at least one and provide me this URL so I can help you. Cool. So do I have to provide the whole URL? No, because CLI understands you're uh, logged into this tenant and if this is your host, so you can just use the relative path, right? <laughs> CLI demo one. I think I, I got uh, correct. Okay, and this is my um, my site. Yeah, the info the info about my site. Uh, another use case where we can see how CLI is interact uh, interactive. So let's say uh, in my tenant, um, I have a couple of site designs and yeah, I have two site designs with the same name. Really smart of me, but it's possible to do it. So I've done it, yeah. And what if I want to get a specific one? Like just like this, I don't want to specify the whole parameters. So CLI will first ask me, do you want to use the ID or specify the title of the site design to get this site design? So yeah, I want to go with the title, I don't care. Maybe it'll work, yeah. So let's type the title, sample site design cool and CLI said hey dude you have two of those with the same title really smart pick it using the id yeah it's really slick yet yeah? it's really helpful and i'll just pick the first one and this is my output okay cool i also i hope you also like it cli supports so what you see and this is what was said when i said as i said that i am a beginner it will do the outputs as text. So it's really readable in the console and it's really important for us that the content outputted in the in the command line is readable. But of course, we support other uh, output modes like JSON. 
CSV to make it, you make a report in a single command. And uh, what's really cool is also MD, which is markdown, uh, uh, like a report uh, representation of the output of the command. So it's really cool. So you can already save it to a file and have the reports ready, right? And okay, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be finishing right now. So the rest thing I want to show is, okay, I know that this, uh, the CLI has some kind of SPFX support validation. What if I want to validate my project? Let's try some AI to help me out. Uh, so let's use the GitHub Copilot. So uh, suggestions, so questions, uh, how can I use CLI for Microsoft 65 to validate my SPFX project? So I know there's some kind of command like this, but yeah, I don't wanna, I'm not sure what, what's actually this. So gave me a response, just a single command, project validate, yeah, does, this command doesn't exist. Let's try GitHub Copilot to explain it. Yeah, project validate subcommand, not really, yeah. If I would go to, it's really SPO, so it uh, should be actually SPFX. And if we will try our own um, AI helper, which we call Chili, and you can die, just go make um, M365 question mark. And now we just we don't need to specify that I'm using CLI because it's obvious. Uh, let's see what will be the response of our own AI, which comes along with CLI. So you can ask any question, how you can do this, how I can do this, what is the command to do this? And you will get not only the command specifically, but all of the content and info that will guide you how you can use it even more for your specific need. Okay, cool, didn't work. <laughs> Let's try again. It's always good to, to do it live, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry for stretching the time. And this is the first, the last uh, beginner's tip I am, um, wanted to show today and I will be summarizing. Okay, let's go back to the slide and maybe, uh, so the last slide I have is like the sum up. So we can uh, get CLI using the NPM install or Docker. We have the setup command. So it's like a wizard to set up your CLI for your preferences. We you support uh, command com completions for any um, shell. We have different methods that you can log in and we have our uh, own AI assistant that should work to give you an answer to your question, but unfortunately it doesn't serve for that. So I will start my next demo with this. I hope it will improve. Okay. so. Um, I hope I encouraged you to follow along me and my co-presenters during this journey. And the next demo will be about tips and tricks about using CLI. So the AI assistant will be perfectly there. Please follow us and join our Discord server if you want to connect and ask any other specific questions using CLI. At the last Monday of every month, we have office hours. And uh, check out our docs, follow us on Twitter. And if you want to contribute, we you get a badge for that. So really, really cool. Thanks a lot. And back to you, Chris. Thank you.